Hey everybody, this is Emmy Jakob, uh, working together with Courtney Brown, and we're going to go over homework 15. So in homework 15 we were giving three separate problems. Uh, the first problem, basically we want to use uh, the Black-Scholes uh, function inside of MATLAB to find the price on a European call option, with the stock price currently sitting at $100, a 20% volatility, 103 out of 252 trading days um, left till it expires, a strike price of $97, and a risk-free interest rate of 5%. In 6.4, we basically use Monte Carlo now to simulate that same thing that we did with a function in 6.3. Um, and in 6.3, basically, we're doing something called the European call option. In 6.5, we look at what's called a delta hedge for a currency, which is the cost of writing and hedging a call option. So let's look at what this looks like in MATLAB. So simple enough, after you've downloaded the MATLAB financial toolbox, we can utilize this BLS price function that MATLAB has. So what that looks like in MATLAB is basically you have a call, a put, and then you do a BLS price. Now again, 100 was the current price that we had set, 97 was the strike price, uh, 0 0.05 or 5% 5 was the risk-free interest, and then we worked, I'm sorry, until it expired, the trading expired was 103 out of 252 days and then we had a 20% volatility. We'll go through the results after we go through all the MATLAB code. So for the second one, what we want to do is create a function now. Um, so this function we're going to call is basically a Monte Carlo BS being uh, the Brian Scholl's price, and then it brings in a few inputs. You've got M, T, T, E, Sigma, R, K, and X naught. And here, uh, as you can see, we can kind of already input these things here. So M right here would be how many independent payoffs we have. Um, our X naught is our current asset price at time T. And we can see we've set T at 23 out of the 252 working days. And until it expires, or until we actually get the exercise, the time of the option, I'm sorry, at 126 over 252, 126 day. And then we can call it 10,000 times um, and basically estimate what happens in what we had done in 6.3 in the previous one. So as you can see, we basically run from J to 1 to 10,000 times, setting that to M. Uh, we call back a function we had done in our 6.1, which is the box molar, and then we can run through, look at our payoffs, and then um, look at our uh, UCL and our uh, LCL, basically our upper control and our lower control limits with a 95% confidence interval. So in 6.5, what we're looking at is creating a function to hedge. Uh, again, in this function, we're really looking at returning the cost of writing and hedging a call option. So hedging is performed uh, NN plus one time. So we can set NN down here, obviously, when we run this function, because we'll call this function down here as a hedge. We can set our numbers. Obviously, we set here, and these hedge numbers are here, so our K value corresponds with our R here, and so on and so forth. Um, our R is our risk-free interest rate. Um, RF here is going to be our general interest rate. Obviously, sigma is going to be your standard deviation. Um, and mu is going to be our expected growth. X naught is going to be our inputs. So we can go ahead and set our... Um, this is based off of the maple code that's in our book. So we can kind of use that to run this and then look and call for our function. So in this, we can run, now call our functions, how many replications we want to run this hedge, and then um, the number of times it wants to be performed. So with that, let's look at some of our uh, numbers that we got. So in 6.3, when we looked at uh, and ran that function, we were able to call it, and our numbers are 7.8403, and our put was 2.8780. Now this is again what happens if you just call the straight BLS price function. And so what we try to do now is look at um, what it'd look like if we did 10,000 simulations in 6.4, we used Monte Carlo. So in Monte Carlo, our upper control limit is 7.91 and our lower control limit is 7.74, which actually our call falls right in between. So with a 95% confidence interval, we can actually look and see that our call, which is our actual running through the function, runs through that. In 6.5, we did a little bit differently where we looked at our mean cost of hedging and we looked at our standard deviation of the cost itself. So for that, our mean cost of hedging was 21.538 and our standard deviation of cost was 22.1755.
So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.